we will now ask their um, convener, Monover Mustafa, to give us um, a kind of keynote to kickstart. Let's and so um, we'll keep it short. But Monover, you have ten minutes. Very good afternoon to all of you. I'm proud proud to be here to present something to you. I'll be moving a little fast because it's a vast issue, but I have to complete everything by 10 minutes. So uh, <clears throat> today's discussion is external debt, energy and prospect for economic recovery in Bangladesh. So each and every country is thinking about their economic recovery after post COVID-19. So in today's discussion, I will touch upon the following issues, the impact of Corona, virus on, or on, on our national economy, state of external debt, external debt in energy sector, energy sector and our national budget, and con some considerations for debate and discussion. Let us come to the <coughs> economic national economic arena. As we know, this is this is this is true to each and every countries that all the global GDP will go down. So it's very natural. Bangladesh GDP will go down. It was it was estimated to be 8.2 for this current fiscal year, but it will come down to 3% as predicted by many organizations, <coughs> including our government. So the, during this period, the worst victim are the export, the import, and the remittances. There are still a jobless job loss, particularly in the informal sector. That informal sector comprised of 85 percent of the whole, uh, uh, know, <coughs> economy, and there will be shrinking fiscal space. So it will be very difficult on part of the government to collect taxes. So there will be very low level of tax collection, and increasing domestic and foreign borrowing will go up uh, simply because of the shrinking fiscal space. And our revenue target is normally, in a country like Bangladesh, revenue target increases on an average 10% every year. But this time, government has set a target to increase it by 1.35% only. And there are many more implications. I'm not going deep into that matter to consume the time. So these are the major uh, areas of concern that our, that our economy is moving around. And what about the external debt? I will not pay. I will not spend so much time on this issue. So these are the ex state of external debt in Bangladesh. This is just outstanding debt. Uh, it has it has gone from you know like these are the la last five years uh, state of external debt. This is outstanding external debt <coughs> in million million dollars. So our debt GDP ratio is kind of it's it's increasing from 13.5 to 14.7 now. However, our debt repayment ratio, uh, in terms of uh, repayment of external debt, Bangladesh is not in a bad position because our reputation and our performance is good. So in that terms, uh, we are not indebted country uh, anymore. However, uh, this is not the case. If you look at the uh, debt payment issue from the perspective of our economy and livelihood. There are so many social and economic costs that the country has to bear or is still bearing simply because of this interest payment of foreign uh, loans. So let us move to the. So on an average, we pay three percent of our revenue income. I'm I'm saying it again. It's revenue income. I, I mean the government income as interest payment for foreign public debt. So this is that what we need to keep in mind. And public sector loan in power sector is soaring up. Let's look at look at the picture. So in 2015 it was just 590 million dollar. Now it has come it has gone up to 4019. It's complete in power sector. As you have understood that uh, I'm moving from our national economy to focusing on energy sector. And I'll come to some conclusion uh, combining both. 
So this is the public sector loan in the energy sector. And let us have the private sector. The net FDI inflow, particularly in the far sector, looks like this. So this is, this, this, from this picture, we can draw something in mind. Let's look at the China bar. It's unbeatable, you know, like uncomparable in comparison to any other countries, especially it's the, it's the private, you know, like <coughs> FDI, foreign direct investment that's coming down in the uh, uh, power sector in Bangladesh. So this is the China that uh, China's Chinese private investment that requires special attention, especially for those who are working in the energy sector and exactly what Chinese investments are doing. I mean, where it is being invested, those are the issues that need to be seriously taken into consideration, especially for those who are working for the coal, working against the coal power plant and, uh, and working for clean energy. Anyway, let's move to the next one. So it comes down to a very uh, related question of energy policy in Bangladesh. It has been in a desire even before the corona outbreak. Our energy policy was in a state of desire. The most significant characteristics of this, you know, mis of, of this state of situation was like mismatch between supply and demand, meaning production capacity versus actual consumption. This is simply because of a policy failure. The second feature is overcapacity to produce while consuming less, resulting in soaring capacity charge paid to IPP, independent power plant owners. And this is what I call how public money goes to the private pockets. Let's come down something about the capacity charge. Capacity charge is simple, a sort of penalty that government has to bound to pay if it fails to buy a certain portion of power from the plant owners as stipulated in the purchase agreement. Purchase agreements are made between government and the private uh, plant owners. So this is this is this is the penalty that government uh, has to uh, pay, and penalty is calculated on the basis of around forty percent plant factor of the power plants. And as you know, that uh, forty at least forty percent uh, plant there must be at least forty percent plant factor. Around now. It's around one third of overall power plants in Bangladesh sitting idle, counting capacity charges for a lack of the demand. Why lack of demand? There is an inflated electricity demand projected in our policy paper. And why that uh, inflated one? Simply because there is a strong presence of lobbyist groups surrounding our power business and an unscrupulous power entrepreneurs who insisted the government and uh, come up with, with that uh, inflated electricity demand. Our economy doesn't need that much electricity, but they are producing. And resulted in the installation of power plants having more than required demand and soaring capacity plants. So there are plenty of uh, power plants, uh, capacity to produce, but economy doesn't have that capacity to consume. That's the crux of the problem. And we are in that, uh, uh, Odd position. So, how much we are paying? It's in BDT. And this is to BDT because just to conclude something. So, it's now 89.29 billion Bangladeshi taka. It's kind of 1.1 billion dollars, perhaps. So, it has gone up from 15, it was 50, now it has 89. And how does this 89 mean for us? This increasing trend of so-called capacity charge paying USD 1.1 billion, that is 89.26 uh, BDT billion annually, including various non-monetary incentives to IPP owners that we are giving. This 1.1 billion could have been utilized for financing the 5 million poor families during this period, paying each 118 monthly for two months or USD 59 for four months. That's what poor people, families need right at this moment. But government is giving just, uh, it would be kind of $25 or something uh, to the poor family, just 
uh, five million poor families. They are giving it to them. So this is the social cost of making illegitimate contacts. What I the purchasing contact I, I would rather say that these are illegitimate contacts with the power producing companies, and these are the social costs that we are bearing. And it has put tremendous pressure on budget, particularly in a time when fiscal space is shrinking drastically. And this is obviously a gross failure of our energy policy, indeed. So, right at this moment, right at this state of affairs, there are some serious concerns that we need to consider immediately. The first one is stop paying interest of foreign public debt for at least two, three years. That's the demand we have to make. It could be debated, it could be discussed in many forums, but we, we believe that Bangladesh is not in a position, economically not in a position to pay the interest of the foreign debt right at this moment. So we need some, you know, like <coughs> holidays for, uh, to revive our economy. And please shut down unnecessary and old power plants to reconcile the loss rather than raising the electricity price. Because that capacity charge, that 1.1 billion capacity charge the government has been paying, and government has took a different uh, route to reconcile this loss, just to uh, raising the prices of the electricity. And that, that a serious uh, financial and, and economic cost of the uh, general people. But government did it in February, just to reconcile this loss. But we are saying, just stop it. Just stop it. Uh, shutting down some of the unnecessary power plants and some old ones. Stop paying so-called capacity charges and revisit the illegitimate contracts with the IPP owners, thereby saving some money to finance the social sector. That essentially, that, that, that seriously, uh, those are serious considerations for now. And the priority for this year is basically the first one would be social security, the second one would be health, third one agriculture, and fourth would be various forms of subsidies and incentives. But interestingly, most of the incentives are going to the rich and the half the businessmen. This is one of the critiques that each and everyone is making right at this moment. And we are asking to revisit all ongoing development projects to cut expenditure deemed unnecessary. Because there are many development projects that have the now, line items, so many line items and budget put against those line items, those are completely unnecessary. You will see in many cases that bureaucrats who would be running, who would be implementing this, those projects, they are going to Europe just to see how, how European farmers are uh, uh, growing potato. This is stupid. But this, some of the, you know, like uh, we call it pleasure trip, are, are, are associated with this, some of these projects. So we are asking just cut down those expenditure drastically. And the next point is just stop implementing unnecessary and extravagant development projects to save public money. Now government is implementing around 1500 different development projects uh, this year. Some are more, there are many projects that don't need it. Even there are many projects that could be implemented half with the half, half of the costs. So we are asking some of the uh, some of the projects that must be stopped, uh, terming those unnecessary, and there are a lot of extravagant problem for uh, projects that we don't need it. Uh, uh, I'm not get, getting deep into that because there are a lot of uh, plenty of uh, examples. And the next point is we got to explore some opportunities to contract unconditional soft loans. I'm putting it quote unquote soft loans because soft loan has different implications to different organizations. So soft loans from the multilateral and bilateral development partners. So these are some of the immediate tasks that our government should pay attention to. Uh, and there are, I have put just two, two uh, important medium and long term um, uh, recommendations. As far as the energy policy is concerned, we must revisit and make necessary changes in the energy policy. That's the proxy energy policies like hot sector master plan, 
uh, accepted in 2016. So it should be revisited and make changes in the light of our national interest because so many national interests are compromised with the, uh, with the uh, business groups and we have to consider the environmental considerations. So these environmental considerations mean so much to the people who are working for the energy sector, especially on the coal. The second point is the so-called growth led development model that we are beating the dams for must be replaced by the sustainable one putting people before the profit. And thank you.